So in terms of synthesizing drum sounds from scratch, I think a good place to start would be the kick drum. Um, there will be three distinct elements in terms of kick drum creation. The first would be um, a sort of fundamental created either in a, a synth like Serum or something like Vital, or if you're on Logic, you might want to use the kick as the drum kit designer, or maybe on Ableton, you might want to use um, Operator. The, the premise is the same. The second layer would be something a bit more characterful, maybe something from a sample, which is just going to give a, a, a live, a live sound to the kick drum and then the third part which may be necessary may not be necessary it will become clearer when we start to mix it will be a very short and very distorted little click um, which serves to accentuate the transient of the kick drum it would also work for a side chain trigger but we'll come back to that later on in the course so let's dive in we're going to start as as normally we would at the bottom which is the kick drum kind of the bedrock of any sort of like rhythmic production. And in terms of creating sounds from scratch, with, in terms of the kick, we need several layers. So we've got like a synthesized fundamental, either synthesized using something like Serum or Vital, or as we're in Logic, we could use the drum synth. And um, we then have what I would probably describe as a characterful layer. Um, this would probably be a sample loaded into a sampler. And then the third layer, which is, you might need, you might not, which um, would be a very, clicky sort of transient. Sometimes that's necessary to bring out the attack in the kick, um, but depending on how we go with our synthesis and our sound design and our mixing, that may become necessary, that may be, uh, that may not. So we look at the page straight away, we can see we've got instance of serum, instance of drum synth. I think we'll start with serum today, so I can just go ahead and delete that. Also on the stereo out, we've got um, some analytical tools that I'm going to use when synthesizing all my sounds. The one on the right, uh, Span Plus, which is a um, spectrum analyzer, which is going to give us a sort of visual representation of um, frequency. And also on the bottom, we've got SM Exascope, which is an oscilloscope, which is going to show us the waveform, which will help us um, check the dynamics of what we're trying to do and also alert us to any problems with phase, which might occur. So they'll be on the stereo out and we'll keep referring to those backwards and forwards as, as we're creating. So we're going to start synthesizing the fundamental, but before we do that, very important, we need to create a couple of audio tracks. And the reason that we're doing that straight away will become very apparent. And we need audio one and two very, very specifically, because I'm just going to drag really quickly a sample onto audio one. And the sample sounds a bit like this. It doesn't really sound like too much of anything. Um, I'm just going to turn off the output. And the reason why I'm doing that will become very apparent um, as we get a bit further on down the line. Um, I'm also going to create another one as well. Why not? Whoops. Let's create an audio track. And I'm just going to copy that, paste it. But we're going to keep the output pointing to the stereo out for that one. We'll, we'll come back to this. Um, and the reason for that will become very apparent. So we'll start at the bottom, start with the fundamental. Um, and we're going to be using Serum to create our fundamental. When I'm creating my kick from scratch, I always like to have a starting point. I think especially with drum synthesis, you can experiment for a very, very long time. So I think it's good to always have a point that you know is a good point to start from. And, and this is how I would look to, to start. We don't really have too much going on here. We've got oscillator A enabled um, with LFO1. Um, and if I just play, and here we've got a nice sort of kick sound. Um, in terms of modulation, we can see that LFO1 is just modulating the coarse pitch of oscillator A. Go into the modulation matrix. So that's without it. Kind of with it. So yeah, not really too much going on here. So I'm going to use LFO1 to modulate some other parameters within the synthesizer to, to maybe just get to look to get the sound that we wanted to get. I might also let it hit the wavetable and also the warp amount you can hear. That just accentuates the transient, just to give us that, that nice click, that nice knock. Uh, I'm also going to turn on the noise oscillator, which will give us a nice click on the transient and also a bit of texture um, across the rest of the kick sound. And again, this is just LFO1 hitting that. Um, let's turn on oscillator B. 
I'll turn the oscillator A so we can actually hear what's going on here. So I've got another LFO here, which is, turn off the noise as well, very subtle. Just literally just a click. And we've got a very, very tight LFO on envelope mode, which is hitting just the level. You can see it's also pitched up uh, three octaves. And we've also got some amplitude modulation. So just gives us a nice little click that we can blend in with the original um, over here in oscillator A. It'll just give us a little bit more presence in terms of the click. And then with the noise oscillator, now we have a nice fundamental, but we should probably start processing this. Um, and we're gonna use these two LFOs here, both on envelope mode as our uh, modulation sources. So let's pick some destinations. Um, if I look at the kick in span, just to have a look at the frequency spectrum, we see we've got a big knock here at around sort of 700 hertz, which is not really, not really great. It's giving us quite a boxy sound. So I'm just going to use my LFO one as a saw. And then let's look at Oops. Remember my keyboard shortcuts. I'm just going to use this to modulate, just to modulate the EQ. You can see it a little bit just scooping out. If I just turn it up, we're just scooping out that mid. I like the smack of it, which is why I'm using this LFO to automate it out, but I just want to calm it down slightly. Uh, I'm also going to Look to just scoop out some of the So again, just using the LFO to just modulate the high pass filter on the EQ. Tidy at the bottom end a little bit. Let's also give it a slight bit of width. We don't want too much reflect, which is a slight amount. Um, Maybe a little bit of width on the using the um, dimension expander. And last but not least, let's use the filter. I, 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 with a lot of my synthesis and serum, the filter usually comes last on the chain. If we have the filter, do lose a little bit of the top end detail. So I'm just going to modulate that using LFO1, just so it opens up. That's nice, it's a bit cleaner. Helps the noise kind of follow this uh, LFO shape as well. And why not, let's just get some drive. So now we've got like a really nice and smacky kick. Um, in terms of this preset, one of the good things is that obviously, because we're synthesizing, we can pitch however we want. And also another thing is if we've got the envelope, uh, LFO one in envelope mode affecting the pitch of oscillator A, we can tighten and sort of lengthen the kick using the LFO rate. So that is the construction of the uh, fundamental. There's not really too much processing that I would put on the channel strip. I maybe just might be mindful of cleaning up the bottom end. So say if we're in, well, let's have a look. I've got some MIDI information on the page already and we're in E. So what I would look to do is let's use a high pass filter. Nothing too dramatic, maybe 18 dB per octave. One of the things I like about Pro Q3 is that we have the musical notes across the bottom. So I'll probably look to um, start to high pass sounds deliberately in, in pitch. So like if the key's in E, I would look to high pass it at a frequency of the note E. So that might be a bit too much. Whenever I tend to synthesize and make kicks from scratch, they tend to be really bottomy. And I'm always trying to fight against that bottom end. So, fundamental is synthesized. Um, let's carry on. I'm just going to open up another software instrument track. 
just so that we can start to bring in our characterful layer, which I'm going to use. Uh, a little loop like that, which is a bit more acoustic. I find that I don't know a lot of people do just use basic um, serum kicks just in isolation for their kick drums. But I find that a little bit lacking in character. So I always want something which I can layer with it, which is going to give me a bit of vibe, a bit of an, a natural feel. I would choose that because it's got a lot of character. Um, there's a lot of nice high-end saturation. Um, there's also in that loop two kick drums. So I could have one maybe for the first kick drum in a bar phrase and then second, uh, the second kick drum to layer with the second kick. It just makes the loop sound a bit more interesting and a little less static. So how would I look to get this into the production? Generally, I would just drag here and then place on um, the software instrument and then add to the quick sampler in optimized mode. So it should slice it up, should slice it up. Of course it hasn't because Logic loves to do what Logic wants. So we might need to do this ourselves. So if we put it into slice mode, we can see now that each note, or each slice is now on it. Separate note. So it means it's easy now for us to start sequencing. So let's find a nice, let's kick drum one. Oops, nice kick drum two. So now we've got, and you can hear they've got a slight different character. I also might just drop the velocity here because if we've got snare drum coming in on um, uh, beats two and four, this is a syncopated kick, so I really want to accent the kick of beat one, and then I would have this slightly quieter. That makes sense to me. First thing I'm going to do, go back into the cue sampler. I'm going to put the polyophony down to uh, mono, and I'm also going to start having a look at the amplitude envelope, because I don't want the sample to clash too much, especially with the click of the synthesized layer. So I'm going to open up my attack to about 15 milliseconds. You can just hear that we've softened the attack there slightly. I might go a bit further. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Second thing, I'm going to play it in context with the, the synthesized fundamental so that we can hear if they're in tune. So now we've got the, the sample in, in tune with the fundamental. Um, sounding a little bit flabby. So I might also go back to the um, amplitude envelope and just let that decay. Now it's sounding a bit more consistent, a bit more coherent. I'm gonna tighten the attack, bring in the decay. We need to do some EQing because we need to obviously ensure that the uh, bottom of the sample is not affecting the bottom of the fundamental. You could do it in the quick sample using the filter, but I'm going to do it in an another way. I'm going to go into my Pro Q3 and I'm going to set inside chain the serum instance. Let's see if we can make sure that we're seeing both of these. We can see both um, frequency spectrums of both sounds, so it should make it easier now for us to be able to scoop out the bottom of the cue sampler or, or the, this characterful layer so it's not affecting the serum layer. So we took out quite a lot there. We scooped out, um, yeah, up to like 300 hertz. Again, I've tuned it to the note of E. I seem to do it that way. I, I was in the studio with Face and he did it that way. So I was like, well, he must know what he's talking about. So that's something I learned of him. Everything's starting to sound a bit more consistent. I like the top end of that sound. I like the, the kind of crunchy metallic sound. So I'm going to look to accentuate that. Um, what I would probably look to do is use one of my favourites in terms of 
saturation, especially on sort of cymbals, metallic sounds, would be Ozone A Exciter. I always like to use the tape um, upwards of 10K and then the triode between 2K and 10K. It just really helps to bring out the, uh, those metallic textures. On the um, characterful layer channel strip, there's probably not too much to do. Um, the last thing before we start grouping and getting everything fat and sounding nice and consistent across a kick group would be to go back to audio three. So here's that little sample that we looked at earlier. I'm just going to copy it and then paste it at every point on this audio track where the kick is playing. Um, make it i mean this is quite difficult to, to sequence because the sample is absolutely tiny there's really not much to it it's just a, a sound which has been completely clipped to the nth degree you can see there's not really a lot of dynamics going on in there there's not really a lot of anything going on there but it's, it's a really useful sample and um, something i made in serum um, i'm just going to put that in a fol in a folder just so it's easier to sequence and then my ocd must make me make that all the right color um so what we have now that's horrible to listen to, but when we have the other layer, and then we're pretty much ready to start grouping. <laughs> 